Yes, sir. Well, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Sam, uh, so much. Uh, sir, Pastor Philip, yes, I remember. Uh, in 1977, I was uh, 16 years old, uh, fresh from high school. And uh, after attending a uh, summer youth camp, the Conservative Baptist Youth Camp in uh, Nagkarlan, Laguna, I gave my life to the Lord. I, I uh, received the Lord when I was 13 years old. But uh, at 15, I attended a summer youth camp and I dedicated my life for uh, uh, the Lord's service. And so I entered PBS College of Bible and uh, Pastor Kuya, Sir Philip was my instructor sa Evangelism 1. So uh, um, a lot of uh, the things that, uh, you know, yung impact niya, the impact and the influence that he has in my life. Uh, we had uh, uh, great times at PBS College of Bible. And um, uh, from there, I learned how to memorize. We were required, of course, uh, uh, to memorize the scriptures, the navigator's way. <laughs> I learned uh, the bridge illustration. I still use that today. In fact, I met a girl. Uh, after my BBC and I shared to her the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ through the bridge illustration. It was a success. She became my girlfriend and now we're married for 35 years. Evangeligao! <laughs> so, <laughs> meron bang mas malalakas na influence dyan? <laughs> na yung napangasawa mo ay eh, uh, winitnessan mo at dinisciple mo pa. Salamat sa awa at tulong ng Panginoon. <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, uh, topic Philippines. Thank you, uh, Pastor Phil. When uh, I entered uh, the ministry at the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches in uh, 2015, uh, Pastor Phil uh, prayed for me. And uh, yung mga unang engagement ko sa PCEC was here also. He introduced mo me to... Uh, the topic core, we had retreats here, and uh, they prayed for me. Thank God. Uh, parang kailan lang. This is, I'm running my fourth year as uh, PCEC National Director. But uh, thank God, Pastor Phil, uh, Pastor uh, Hill, Balignasay, uh, the topic uh, leaders, uh, and all my friends, uh, yung mga kaibigan ko. Uh, our president ng Conservative Baptist Association of the Philippines, Pastor Jun Cordoba, is here. Uh, yan, uh, we were together at CBAP uh, for nine years. Then after that, uh, uh, the Lord led me to uh, serve here at PCEC. Uh, and I see, I saw Pastor Serge Velasquez. Yan po, isa sa mga Pastor Serge, respected uh, leader po ng uh, CBAP. Yan po ang uh, aking uh, modelong church planter. Yeah, so I'm so happy to be here. But uh, I would like to express my uh, uh, regards and I would like to honor. Uh, I'm so happy to see uh, Dr. Richard Ramesh, uh, who's been uh, a uh, prayer partner also. He has prayed for me many, many times. You know, he's a, one of the best friends of my brother, Luis. So even before, uh, I uh, also sat in some of the sem seminars that he did when my brother was uh, pastoring Green Hills Christian Fellowship. Uh, and uh, also, I'm so happy to see Al Bridges again. Uh, so good to see you, uh, Al. And uh, yeah, sa lahat po, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you so much. Uh, last year, when... Um, um, Dr. Ramesh was here. We uh, sat down for a fellowship, coffee, coffee fellowship at uh, the Dome in uh, uh, Edsa Shangri-La, yung pong gilid uh, besides Shangri-La Hotel. <laughs> Mahal yung kapi sa Shangri-La eh. Kaya I, I invited them at the uh, uh, beside Edsa Shangri-La Hotel, uh, the Dome uh, coffee shop. And we prayed about this, we dreamt about this, and thank God we're here together. Amen? Palakpakan natin ng Panginoon. But uh, 
This is because of the hardworking uh, uh, pastoral training uh, commission of PCEC. Uh, salamat sa kanila. Um, the theme of uh, the GPRO Pastoral uh, Trainers Summit is uh, entrusting the word to reliable men. I was given the topic uh, entrusted with the gospel. But uh, I put here, I added the need for new approaches to leadership development. Uh, I will not be giving a sermon. Alam kong pagod na kayo sa sermon eh. Di ba? Uh, bago kayo umalis dito, sinermon na na kayo ng mga misis nyo. <laughs> and so, I just would like to share something that is in my heart. As I uh, traveled around the country in the last uh, uh, three and a half years doing ministries, uh, the Lord has entrusted me at uh, the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches. So, tonight, I would like to share. May I share with you some of the most uh, critical situations that we face in the Philippine church today. So I did not uh, prepare a uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation because all of these are coming uh, from the heart. But I would like to uh, share main concerns that need careful attention by the church by the uh, pastoral trainers and all the training institutions in the Philippines. Briefly, part of this I have shared with the Philippine Association of Bible and Theological Schools also during their um, national convention. But I'm praying that God would uh, inspire you, give you get, uh, greater motivation and would touch your heart tonight so that we as the Lord uh, gives us the power and enable us, we will all be able to help one another in addressing these critical situations in the country. I was reading the, um, uh, the uh, is it a newsletter or a letter from Al Bridges? I read it. I reviewed it again uh, this afternoon. He reported that about 178,000 people are being added to the church globally. 178 new believers. That, um, that's a massive number of believers. Parang hindi kayo masaya doon. Palakpakan natin ng Panginoon. 178,000 souls are added to the kingdom of God. Every day. Praise God. Praise God. So in spite of the many challenges that uh, the world faces and the church faces in every country, in every nation, 178,000 are being added to the church globally. And because of that, new churches also are being planted every day. I was just uh, in Denver, Colorado uh, last week. Uh, for a three-day meeting with the Global Alliance for Church Multiplication. There were no uh, data presented, but it was a consultation. This is a vision of seeing 5 million new church plants by the year 2020. And of course, I reported uh, uh, what, what's happening here from the 1900s to the present time how the church progressed in the Philippines. I've shared, you've seen the data, uh, that uh, from 1974, there were 5,000 churches. In 2015, there were 66,000 uh, Bible-believing churches. After two years, we all planted 12,000 churches. By the year, uh, by, uh, this, uh, by February 2017, there are 72,000 Bible-believing churches in the Philippines. So in spite of the many challenges also that we face in the country, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is moving forward in our country. The gospel is advancing. So new churches are being planted every day, but we face challenges in the Philippines from 2000, uh, year 2000 to 2010. The peak of church growth in the Philippines was in 1985 to 1986. How many of you remember Dawn 2000 movement? Dawn 2000 movement? Tas niya yung kamay ninyo? 
wow, half of this, hindi nyo na inabutan yung Dawn 2000. Yung mga tumaas ng kamay, yan po yung matatanda ng iglesia. Uh, elders of uh, the church, you know. And uh, they remember what happened during the Dawn 2000. But you would remember that in 1985 to 1986, that was the peak. Uh, annual average church growth in the Philippines was 9.7. But 2000 to year two, uh, 2010, there was a radical decline. Uh, from uh, 9.7, it uh, declined to about uh, 3 point uh, something percent. So from 15 churches every day, it declined to five churches every day. But thank God, we have arrested some of these problems. The main reason is the division in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will remember uh, that many uh, even left PCEC, started their own movements, and uh, denominations went on their own way. There was no coordinated, uh, coordinated efforts in uh, church multiplication, in discipleship, although denominations are moving forward with their own goals. But there was no coordination. There was no um, uh, um, common thrust for discipling the nation and the church multiplication. So 15 churches every day to five churches every day. But as I have said, thank God, from 2015 to 2017, the Lord has started to touch the leaders of the country. And there is... Uh, a, a, a growing and uh, thank God the Lord is blessing has touched the hearts of our leaders and uh, if you've heard Palawan 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6 this is the gathering of top denominational leaders uh, in the country um, the bishops uh, have gathered in the last six years and we will have another one in November 26 uh, to 29 in Palawan. This is a, a gathering of all uh, top leaders in the country confessing their sins against each other and uh, identified what has uh, divided the church and promised and committed uh, not only uh, affirming their unity in the body of Christ but said the things that have happened in the past will not happen again in the Philippines. And uh, because of that, the Philippines' vision 120,000 by 2020 was born. That is the vision of seeing uh, the number of churches in the Philippines doubled from 60,000 in 2015 to uh, 120,000 in the year uh, uh, 2020. And uh, I believe, and uh, as, as data comes in every day, we believe we're going to overshoot that number uh, for God's glory. Praise the Lord. But uh, because of rapid church growth in recent years, uh, globally and in our country, many, many leaders without or very minimal ministerial training were catapulted to church leadership positions as pastors and church leaders, evangelists, and some of them are in uh, uh, big groups uh, in the country. Globally also, it was reported that only 5% of over 2.2 million pastors in the world are trained for pastoral ministry. Did you hear that? That means 95% of all the pastors around the world do not have pastoral or formal or non-formal ministerial training. And you will see that the health of the church depends on the health of the pastors and leaders. And we learned that many times here at Topic. Amen? That's why we are so concerned about the health of pastors that one commission of this massive amount of 
churches in the Philippines. One commission is dedicated full time for the training of pastors. That's why topic is here. G Pro and uh, and uh, other um, uh, organization helping us in this ministry. So we are seeing what's happening in the global scenario. We are seeing that in our country also. Looking back, we saw progress in church growth in the Philippines in the last 100 years. From um, uh, 1.8% uh, uh, in, in, in population, right now we are about 10.4%. So there are about uh, 11, uh, what some says, 13 million born-again Christians in the Philippines. And that's a huge number. While there was a major push on church planting, church growth, and missions that resulted to rapid church multiplication in our country, we realized later that there was no balance in starting and strengthening churches. There was more push in church planting and church multiplication. But we lack the balance in training uh, pastors and strengthening uh, churches. There were more emphasis in church growth than church health in the many years past and the health of pastors. So as a result, result of that, we saw a huge per percentage of churches as a result of that shutting down. We have seen that even in our denomination at Sibab. We saw that in Cebu, di ba? Benji? <laughs> we saw that in Mindanao. Kasi nga, uh, yung mga pastor, nahirapan, walang mga training, so nahirapang lumakas yung simbahan nila. Ang resulta niyan, the churches are not able to support the pastor. They're not able to support the expenses of the church. So many churches shut down. And uh, those are sad stories. A huge percentage of churches also remained weak. In fact, many are struggling in, uh, in the number of believers and declining in membership. We see that. Uh, in the mass number of churches in the Philippines. Um, we were told that the average uh, number uh, during uh, uh, one of the reports that I've heard uh, two months ago, the average attendance in our church, uh, churches are 58. But some says it's 75. Uh, we need to validate all those. Um, many churches got caught up in the number game. You know, gusto nila mas maraming mga miyembro. Uh, kahit na hindi masyado yung ministry sa intentional discipleship. It was uh, only recently that more churches have started to be engaged in intentional discipleship. That's why when Edmund Chan, Pastor Philip Ta, uh, uh, P uh, Peter Tanchi, the Victory Christian Fellowship, uh, uh, introduced the IDMCs and all of this. Makikita mo parang uhaw na uhaw yung mga pastors at saka mga leaders uh, to learn. Of course, uh, nauna pa yung purpose-driven, di ba? Uh, yung uh, membership uh, growth and uh, paradigms of uh, uh, discipling uh, members in the churches. So, in the past, also, many church activities, many, uh, many churches and many church leaders are exhausted in many church activities. You know? Pag maraming activities sa church, ibig sabihin, active yung church. Di ba? Ganyan? Pagka marami kang activities. Pero maraming mga churches na uubos ang pera sa church activities. Pero at the end of the year, Zero baptism, zero ang nadagdag sa mga simbahan. And that resulted to fatigue 
of many Christian workers at, uh, with less impact in the ministry. And these are the things that uh, happen. But as we envision continued growth, you know, the body of Christ launched a new um, a church multiplication or church or national discipleship movement. As we envision the continued growth of the Philippine church, it is vital, it is vital to address the issues of church health. The issue, issues of struggling health of churches in our day. This is the concern that was addressed uh, at the Global Proclamation Congress in Thailand. So church health was uh, the main uh, concern and pastoral training. As a result of that, um, uh, PCEC, Recently, you know, right after the G, G Proc uh, uh, Congress in Thailand, Pastor Philip and those who have attended the G Proc, we created the Church Health Commission at PCEC. It's still a baby commission at PCEC. Pastor Hill was there, Pastor Nixon was there. Uh, that would address this critical need to address a church health situation and pastoral health in the country. Number one concern needing to be addressed, crucial to church health, is the training of pastors and church leaders. Ito po ang number one concern sa situation na ito. Second major concern are some pressing issues in our country today. What are these uh, issues that we face in the country today? Multitude and many faceted, profound, and unprecedented struggles and changing scenarios we experience in the Philippines right now. But in spite of all this, as I have said, in spite of the many challenges that we have faced, in the past, just in the past decade, the Philippine church, by his grace, moved despite all of these unprecedented and pressing challenges in our country. The prevailing situation in our society demands that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Philippines and the uh, theological and ministerial institutions adjust approaches for us to be relevant in our fast-changing culture and the challenges in the Philippines. I would like to mention some. Today, we are groping for answers to serious problems facing our country. From economic crisis affecting the quality of life in our country. We face that. The common Filipino face that every day. In your churches, in our churches, we face that. Polit political turmoil. How do we address this? Ngayon, ang problema pa, halos uh, nagbabangayan, nag-aawayan, pati mga bishops at mga Christian leaders, uh, sa iba't ibang perspectives on how to transform or to change this society. Uh, makikita mo yung mga dating magkakaibigan sa Facebook ngayon, uh, tinanggal na, nag-unfriend na. Kasi yung iba, ganyan. Yung iba, ganyan. Di ba? Uh, so itong mga <laughs> situation, the political situation, tends to divide uh, even the leaders of the church. You know? uh, there are conflicts, uh, we're addressing this also, you know, BOL, uh, the Bang Samoro Organic Law. Uh, I was in Mindanao, uh, Dr. Aldrin and I, with the leaders of the Moro National Liberation Front and the MILF. As you know, there are 3 million Muslims in the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao that will be affected by BOL. But do you know also that there are 300,000 Christians 
in the ARMM that will be affected by Sharia law. And it's passed. It was signed by the president. And so we gathered all the pastors. We will, uh, Dr. Aldrin is in, uh, in Marawi right now, meeting all uh, the Christian students at MSU and uh, giving them encouragement. Uh, and so these are things that are coming to us. And aside from all this, moral decadence leading to crime and killer diseases, when uh, President Duterte started office, about how many millions surrendered, uh, drug surrenderies, we realized that narco politics and drug problem, drug menace in the country is that great already. And I do not know the count right now of how many have died already because of the war on drugs. And uh, we have faced just in the last three years, natural calamities that we have not seen in the Philippines in our history. And uh, this is also because of ecological abuse, threatening the very existence of life. Do you know that uh, 32 young people are being affected by HIV AIDS every day in the Philippines? This, uh, this is higher than many uh, uh, countries in the world. 32 uh, are being infected every day. So with all this, the church is pressing on to face new phases of contemporary challenges of much complexity and much severity in the last five years. How would our pastors address all this? questions and situations in our country. Brothers and sisters, we need to pray and we need to look at this situation, these, these things that are happening in our country. So with such phenomena threatening human life and institution, threatening biblical marriage and family, the laws are still being discussed. It has been passed in Congress, in the lower house, now it's in the Senate, the promo, uh, promoting and legislating the agenda of lesbian, gay, transsexual, and lesbians. And what's next? Sex, Same-sex marriage. And what's next? The regulations on Christian schools, Christian hospitals, and churches. And all of this that will be faced by pastors and churches in the country. There is disorder, there's fear in many areas as we face these new challenges. How would the body of Jesus Christ going to face all these challenges? Uh, as salt and light, as, and as God's agent of transformation and reconciling, most uh, foremost, so our ministry reconciling people with God and bringing peace and transformation through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paano natin ito? Susuungin itong mga problemang ito at sitwasyon na ito. In the face of all these realities and changing times, we know the mandate of the Lord Jesus Christ is very clear to us. Go and make disciples. Let us not, for, we do not forget that. We are to fulfill the great commission to make disciples of all the nations. That's a clear mandate. Another clear mandate from the Lord Jesus Christ is to demonstrate the great commandment in our words, in our deeds, to help the poor, the marginalized of our society. And these are major uh, concerns also in our uh, country. Thirdly, we are mandated to build up the body of Christ. As Apostle Paul expressed in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, teaching all people, all wisdom, to present them perfect in Christ Jesus at the coming of our Lord. That is our desire for the Philippine church. 
that we build the body of the Lord Jesus Christ up. Hearing from evangelical leaders, and as I travel around the Philippines, some practical steps that would help us, and that we, that we can do together in addressing all of the above, all these things that I just mentioned. Number one, the body of Christ must stand united to maximize all opportunities in advancing the gospel. Thus, while there are problems affecting the church now, as we will experience in these challenging times never seen before, there are also prospects and opportunities that we can maximize upon. Salamat sa Panginoon sa topic. You know, we are all from different denominations. The Lord has blessed us with, with, with the, this ministry. Amen? Amen? Let's maximize. This is a, an opportunity for us. Uh, magtulung-tulungan tayo para makita na, natin talaga na ang ating mga kapasturan sa buong Pilipinas ay makita nating malulusog. Amen? At malalakas sa pamagitan ng uh, pastoral uh, training. Um, there are many, even the challenges that we are facing in the country. God is turning all of this to new opportunities. As we t sit down here today, 100 houses are being built in Delapayan, uh, Delabayan, in uh, uh, Lanao. The Marawi crisis siege. We all have heard about this. 600,000 people were displaced because of the Marawi conflict. Phil Rads, we served about 5,000 families during that, feeding them Muslims. And uh, 100 houses for Muslims are being built, built in Dilabayan. Thank God for the ministries of the Mindanao Evangelical Leaders Council. But uh, we support, uh, Phil Rads support this and uh, major churches. Anyone here from Mindanao? From Mindanao? Palakpakan nga natin ang mga taga Mindanao. Uh, I know you're part of uh, MELK or you're part of uh, the many ministries that went uh, to Marawi. And uh, churches in Iligan, in Cagayan de Oro, in Mindanao are bonding themselves and churches from Manila are supporting this. They know the terrain. They know the people there. And the good news is because the love of God is being demonstrated in many, many ways, many, many Muslims are turning to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Maximize all of these opportunities, even these difficult situations in the country. God is using all this. There are hundreds of house churches that are mushrooming in the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. Amen? Ngayon nga, I just received a report from Pastor Aldrin. You know, gathering Christian students in Marawi City. In Marawi. Salamat sa Panginoon. Uh, so, the body of Christ must stand united to maximize all opportunities in advancing the gospel. But secondly, uh, another practical thing, is to seek God always and understand the times. Understand the times. We need to pray. What is required is continued prayerful vigilance and looking to God for proper understanding of times so that like the children of Issachar in the Old Testament, we will know what ought to do, what we ought to do in this rapidly changing culture and changing times in our country. Having the understanding of the children of Isaac, the church will be able to serve more effectively. How many of you have heard this is the most controversial Bible in the Philippines right now? <laughs> How many of you want a copy of the Pinoy New Testament version? <laughs> well, we launched this and we were surprised, you know. Uh, during the translation, I also serve right now by, by God's grace. 
as uh, Chairman of the Board and President of Philippine Bible Society. In the 119 years of Philippine Bible Society, this month, you know, this is the only uh, time when young people, not many from evangelical churches, kasi may mga Bibles na sila, but many millennials and young people from the Roman Catholic Church are lining up to buy new Bibles. The Pinoy uh, version of the New Testament. We are translating Proverbs and Psalms right now. <laughs> Nasyak ka ba? Pero makaka... <laughs> Makaka-relate ka dito. Yeah. Of course, there are so many... Uh, criticisms about this uh, bilingual uh, version. But uh, what we're seeing, personally, I believe that when young people are reading the Bible and understanding the Word of God in their own language, and we're seeing that, that 85 million Filipinos, these are Roman Catholics, are you know, even the, Roma, the CBCP had an imprimatur of this. And they said, we want every young Roman Catholic young people to have a copy of the Bible. I really believe that there will be a reawakening in the Roman Catholic Church. So, new things, new approaches, so that young people and men and women will understand clearly the message of God for them. So, Pinoy, New Testament version. Say nyo po na King James version only, patawad po. <laughs> Alam ninyo, magkasama kami ni uh, 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 Bishop Ruben Abante uh, doon sa Metro Manila celebration with Bill Graham. At ang sabi namin, huwag nating pag-usapan yung translation ng Bible. <laughs> Let's talk, just talk about the gospel right now. But uh, that's second. The, the, the third one is uh, new strategies for mission and evangelism and church growth is needed in our times. The approaches by the church have to be contextualized also. To the present spiritual needs of the people. Mission agencies, denominations, parachurch organizations, and local churches must rethink strategies on how to send missionaries. As you have seen, how missionary sending from the West has changed. Marami ngayon yung mga churches, yung mga members nila. They do not send uh, long-term missionaries anymore. But the whole church are coming. So these are the new things that's happening even in sending missionaries. In church planting, uh, in church health, and church growth. In 2014, when we had a church planting consultation here, right here at CDC, it was reported that what's left of Don 2000 was 20,000 barangays. Today, there are 40,000, 42,000 or more barangays in the country. 20,000 barangays are still unchurched in the Philippines. That's 50% of the number of barangays in the Philippines are still unchurched. And where are these? In Muslim Mindanao. Mga Mindanao. We're praying for you, Mindanaoans. There's a great need for new approaches on how to share the gospel to the Muslims. When traditional approaches would not work, you know, we were told by the, we gathered the house church leaders, we, they do not have the means or they do not know how many Muslims really, or how many house churches, but we know, we gathered here the house church leaders in Mindanao and they said traditional churches of what happened during the dawn 2000 when a local church must have 25 
or 50 baptized members. You must have 52 worship services. You must have a set of officers and then financial records so that you can be called a local church. They said that would not work in our situation in Marawi. We cannot gather publicly. But in every home, there are Muslims that are worshipping like churches, house churches. In every PNP camps, meron po ako mga nakilala, mga police dito kanina. Asan ba si General da Danaw Afwang? As ba, mukhang tumakas ah. <laughs> ha? Uh, wala? Nag-awol? Oo, pero, but I saw there are policemen. They're in every PNP camps right now and AFP camps, there are disciple-making movements. There are worship services. They are baptizing. They are uh, doing the ministries of the local churches. Uh, two days ago, we were in General Santos City and we met with the chaplains of the RD Rivera Company. They have about 3,000 employees. 2,000 in, uh, in uh, Papua New Guinea and about 1,000 in General Santos City. They have chaplains. And so they have worship services. They have ministries. They are discipling, evangelizing and discipling their employees right there on the ships. They're having worship services right there in their canneries, right there in the business places. So these are new approaches that are not, that were not done tradition, uh, um, uh, not the same as the traditional approaches. So when the Philippines Vision 120 by 2020 was casted, we said, how are we going to count the house churches? And how are we going to count the simple churches? Campus Crusade for Christ said their contribution is 7,000 campus churches in the Philippines, Vision 120 by 2020. I was with attorney Michael Ong yesterday, the ASEC, and he is the head of the Office of the President Christian Fellowship. Uh, Pastor Gas and uh, Pastor Gas is a regular uh, um, um, visitor there. But there's um, discipleship movements happening in many uh, LGU offices. And so these are different approaches. The Philippines Vision 120 by 2020 sees the necessity to utilize combined approaches of traditional and new creative ways in starting new believer communities in house churches, simple churches, and basic discipleship movements everywhere to saturate the whole Philippines. Another one is new training approaches and leadership development needed. The teaching institutions such as seminaries and Bible schools will have to tailor training of pastors and church workers in understanding the realities and developing uh, capabilities in outreaches. Lay leaders must be trained to supplement and complement church ministry efforts. Kung tayo ay aasa lang sa mga seminary and uh, uh, Bible College graduates, kakapusin yung uh, mga pastors natin. So intentionally, we need uh, to look at lay people, uh, men and women, to help us in the leadership of the churches. Another one is maximizing the use of media and technology. The cyber age, technology, must be harnessed and maximized in achieving mission and training objectives. Of course, all this can help produce uh, proactive forecasts 
and other relevant information and statistics for planning and activating church growth. Right now, we're talking to some Thai uh, uh, programmers and developers so that we can have an app in our cell phones so that we can monitor the growth of uh, the number of churches that are being planted uh, in the Philippines every day. And uh, I understand that Philippine Campus Crusade for Christ is, has an app right now where they can see where the campus churches are being started in the country. The intelligent use of websites and social media and the internet for instruction must be utilized. Mga kapatid, thousands of overseas Filipino workers, scientists, doctors, engineers, nannies, domestic helpers are starting churches everywhere around the world. We need to think about them. How do we train them? How, we, how do we put tools in their hands so that they will continue? They're planting, they're starting groups in ships. And sabi ni Pastor Nono Badoy, about 300 ships have Filipino lay pastors already around the world. Ay kung pwede lang sa aeroplano mag-church. Uh, okay? So, training programs for OFWs. We, you know, Al Bridges was, uh, I appreciate what he was sharing a while ago about this. But we need to have training programs for OFWs. And I am happy to hear that there are already ongoing programs. Uh, hallelujah, that we can use. Praise God. But for marketplace leaders, for house church leaders, and those who are ministering to restricted areas, and for millennials. Okay? Evangelism programs on the internet, radio, and TV, where possible, have to be customized in the cultural and political context to become more acceptable to the local communities. At PCEC right now, we are in so social media. Where is Paul Mark? Paul Mark is full-time volunteer at PCEC. His ministry, Facebook. Facebook, full-time. Uh, volunteer siya. Thank God for Victory Christian Fellowship that supports his ministry. And we have started radio and TV. We are airing programs in the internet every Saturday at 7 p.m. through GCTV and DZAS Trinity Broadcasting Network. We are present at Signal Channel 185 every Sater Saturday and Sunday. So, we're Utilizing all of this. We need to take advantage of all these blessings in the church. Amen? These are blessings as uh, a church to advance the gospel and the training of church and kingdom workers. Lastly, the church must provide the answers needed to the needs of common people. Yung pong mga practical lessons that we can share to people. The church should be able to offer Timely, relevant, meaningful views, and much-needed answers to the issues affecting the daily needs of people and issues that confront society. And we must arise from complacency and needs to be bolder, bolder in presenting the truth. And there is no room for complacency, complacency in our time today. Why did I say that? We are addressing issues today in the Philippines on prophecies, even growing number of cults in the country. We have pastors right now that are members of the Council of Heaven. It seems that in our country, we have gotten used to hearing new titles. We have the appointed Son of God who is now equal to the Father and He owns the whole world. And brothers and sisters, billions are being poured out as an offering to this cult in the Philippines. Do we hear the church 
saying about Pastor Akibolo, uh, Apollo Kiboloy. Right now, they have television programs in every city in our country. They are owning major television media network. It's now time. We need to rise up, mga kapatid. You know? And right now, we are he hearing not only appointed son of God, but there are supreme bishops, uh, uh, supreme apostles, and supreme prophets. <laughs> Kung ano-ano ng mga titoli dito para pataasan na ng mga title dito sa Pilipinas, mga kapatid. Uh, eh, ako, bishop lang. Kayo, mga... <laughs> so, ano kaya ito? Uh, hindi tayo yayaman dito. <laughs> That, we need to pray for sensitivity. Amen? We need to pray for sensitivity. But we need to pray for boldness. And, mga kapatid na pastoral trainers, greater faithfulness to the Word of God in proclamation and in practice. Nasa sa kamay po ninyo yan. Be very careful. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Kanina, in closing, ito conclusion. Dahil gabi na po, may picture taking pa tayo. Ephesians 5, 17. Be careful then, how you live not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The days are evil. I thank God for our visionary, visionary leaders who obeyed God and endeavored to position us, the Philippine church. You are the pastoral trainers. We thank God we are here at this point right now, poised to reach new heights and greater advances and exploits for our Most High God. I pray that as new leader emerges a topic, as new leaders are positioned in our ministries, and now we are going to talk about new strategies aligned to addressing current issues. I pray that this conference will bring about revival in our country, reawakening and new enthusiasm in serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our Master, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, God. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa mga pastoral trainers. Salamat po sa mga leaders namin. Thank you for, for uh, Sir Pastor Philip sa topic, yung abin pong mga mentors. We thank you for GPROC. We thank you for topic. We thank you, God, uh, for these ministries whose uh, desire and passion is to see that pastors are equipped and trained and able to lead well the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ entrusted to us here in the Philippines. I pray for my fellow pastors and different pastoral trainers. We thank you for, I thank you Lord for bringing us together in this uh, GPRO conference here in the Philippines. I pray that you would continue to shower all the blessings upon the Philippine church, O oh God, through the ministry of the pastoral trainers. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa biyaya niyong ito sa iyong iglesia sa Pilipinas. Sa iyo po ang kapurihan, ang kalwalhatian, sa pangalan po ng aming Panginoong Yesu Kristo. Amen and Amen. Maraming salamat po at magandang gabi.